What's happening, everybody? Welcome to V3Cast, episode 23, the official Voyager 3 podcast. What's happening, fellas? What's up, What's going man? On? Man, we're getting it done. Ready to Chilling. rock. Chilling, working, checking, rechecking. Always, always <laughs> checking and rechecking. That's Making right. sure Much all work. the levels are right and getting the color balance and correction right. That's right. And That's right. ready to ship it out to the editors production (laughs) oh man so uh what's new what y'all been up to rocking and rolling and whatnot oh yeah that's right (laughs) that's right greg how about you uh you know rocking and rolling and whatnot (laughs) all right man all right i've been rocking and rolling but uh we, we took a little pit stop me and the kids on saturday and hit this uh cool little comic and toy show that was over here on the east side of Detroit. And it was a lot of fun, real small show, real intimate show, but we picked up a couple of fun things, some stickers and some little mini toys about the size of muscles. Do you remember that? You know, the yeah. little muscle toys, but these were uh, in the Godzilla universe. We got six oh, of them. Sweet. Little cool. Some of them are get... see-through. Jet Jaguar? I don't think so. These were all monsters, not the ro- Jet Jaguar is that robot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Megalon? Were, I, I, I'm pretty sure we got him and we got this yeah. one that, Looks like it glows in the dark, but it doesn't glow in the dark. But it has kind of like that sort of transparenty greenish color. It was fun. Sweet. You got it, Steve. Hit that thing with your the flashlight on your phone. It'll glow. It'll glow. Yeah, right. Exactly. Just hit it with that <laughs> flashlight. I saw our buddy there, uh, Christopher George, nice. who runs um, nice who runs uh, the Real Crime podcast and the Movie Sleuth. Um, yeah. website that reviews movies and stuff like that. He has a whole team of talented writers and film buffs, but uh, they were there. They had a table. They were broadcasting Sweet. kind of half the day. So uh, I said hi to him and congratulations on having the podcast back on because they took a couple year break because of COVID, but they're yeah. ramping it back up. I think they've done uh, maybe two or three episodes so far. So uh, kudos to them, man. <clears throat> that's awesome yeah yeah i saw on my facebook feed he was broadcasting from there yeah yeah absolutely and they had a lot of funko pops and that's always a good thing all kinds Man, of did stuff. you find those kiss ones i'm looking for i didn't see any kiss ones at all it was more of the comic come on and, and movie variety no no uh nothing outside of that bubble so much all right i was all looking right. i'm always, keep I'm always an keeping eye an eye out they had an yeah. unopened nintendo entertainment system i mean it was in the box Nice. That was cool with the gun for duck hunt and everything. It was yeah. awesome. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, fellas. Well, before we get into our first topic, you know, I got to know, what are you drinking? Aaron, you look like you got a really good beverage going on over there. I do. I do. See, uh, I know these things. Anyone who knows me knows that Iron Maiden is my favorite band in the world and they do their own beer, which is one of my favorite beers. Um, this is a new one, though. Well, newish. It's a new variety called Sun and Steel, Man, and it's a, cool a sake-infused beer, lager. And, wait a minute. Uh, Can they do yeah. that? Is that? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What, what, did they, what, what did they infuse it with there, Aaron? Sake. It's a Japanese. Look, look at it. It's a Japanese-themed. That's awesome. But it's wait, a samurai. Is that like, yeah. a, something, like a flavor they put in there? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. It is. All right. It is. All right. Just checking. Have you ever had sake at the uh, at the hibachi house? And ever had sake? It's yeah, pretty you good. Know, pretty it's strong. Just, it's just that you know some people take a stance on such collaborations and like banana and beer. Like, <laughs> like mixing those two things to some people would be so, yeah uh, to sacrilege. some people. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> hey, you know so, I, I look at it like this, man. Variety is a spice of life. Nobody would have thought that metal and jazz would have gone good together. And they were wrong. Right. right. Come well, on. Greg, Greg is making fun of my, you know, no, I know. You, your kind of rigidness on some things. I, I understand. On some things. That's the key, Greg. <laughs> I never promise to be consistent about that. So <laughs> yeah, go. I'm going to try it. That's the, the real time. problem is the inconsistency. Aaron won't die on that hill. Man, and that can look super cold too because it's got your fingerprints everywhere you're touching it like nice. the fro- you interrupt the frost on that can yeah <laughs> it's got All a right. good sound to it and uh it sounds like a like a japanese big old gong 
Oh, let me turn up the reverb. Like a giant gong. Right, right. Wait, listen. <laughs> yes. I can't hear anything. <laughs> oh, <you>? man. Not only are <laughs> we a band, and not only do we have a podcast, but we may get into the voiceover work because that was awesome, Aaron. <laughs> Oh man, that's great. Greg, what do you got over there, man? With all that nice, cool blue light around you. What do you got? I got something new. Uh going a different going a different way. Let's see if you can see it. Can you read that? Well being. Well being. Well being. Well being. What is what is that? A healthy IPA? What is that? Got vitamins in it? Non alcoholic. Oh, okay. Cool, man. I've go. been dab I've been dabbling in the non alcoholic <clears throat> IPAs. There's a few that I've tried so far, but I'm trying this one new tonight. And, cool. and they still the got the hoppy flavor, right? They still got that nice potent hops. That's right. You oh. ready for the opening? There it is. Yes, sir. That was good sounding. Smells like an IPA. All right. Fair enough. All right, I'm going to pour, pour it into my Beatles glass. Rubber sole. Hey, whatever is delicious is whatever's right. That's all yep. that matters, man. Thanks for yeah, bringing so in another Beatles um, glass uh, to the... Sure. I don't know if this is a different one than last time. I might well, be the same one. Damn it. <laughs> no, I got I a couple. Of, uh, my favorite Beatles albums. There's two of them. And yeah. I tend to use those glasses the most. Hold that. Sure. Sure. See it. Look at that. Non-alcoholic well-being IPA. What's what the memory of that? The other favorite Beatles album besides Rubber Soul. Revolver. Nice. Those are the two best. Yeah, I, I mean, we could dedicate a whole podcast to that. <laughs> just those two are the best yeah come on come those on those are the best two, those are the best two beatles albums i don't even think that's debatable i'm a it's i'm a, certainly debatable. I'm a white album man myself but i do like everything i mean there's not no see there's not really too you much can't, i don't you dislike can't just I, say I, i'll die on that hill what? i'll die on that hill aaron <laughs> no i'm drawing a you're line crazy. in the sand you're those crazy. are the best two beatles the, albums. those are the ones <laughs> that give greg the mojo dude that get them the all feels. great. They're all great. You, how can those, those two be the are best? the best too? Mm. Hey, ask the people in the comments. I bet have I'm you ever wrong. Heard, on this you too, ever but... heard "Let It Be"? Ever heard of that yes, one? I have heard it. It's not as good ever as a uh, <laughs> revolver or rubber. Soul. Oh my god! Ha have you heard Billy Preston on the Rhodes electric piano? <laughs> Come on, man! All right. Well, that's <laughs> sure a whole. Have. That's another episode. We'll just dissect the Beatles albums hey. one by one. Hey, that could be fun, man. For sure, yeah. Aaron. You're yeah. usually critical of me floundering. Here I'm making a bold statement. I'm I'm laying it down. Mm -hmm. He's got a point there, Aaron. He's got a point. All right. Uh, you usually give me crap for picked floundering. A position and picking, dug in. Yeah, that's right. I picked the position. These are the best two Beatles records, Rubber Soul and Revolver. It's not up for debate. I there's mm -hmm. a difference between saying they're your favorites and they're the best. That's the no, weird they part. are the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so I, it has I mean, been said. It's, oh well known. it's well it's, known it's well known everybody the, knows that the I, millions and i think millions some of the of versions fans. of the album even had the hype stickers on it that said oh by the way this one's the best so yeah, thank you before for the other ones were even out they were <laughs> hey, like uh, this is the best and it's going to be always known as the best <laughs> we got like four more why, albums I don't, to put got, out. I don't know why you're getting mad at me i'm just reporting the facts Steve, well, the best. what are you yes, drinking? The best, the best the best of the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> I have a new ginger beer. Uh oh, hell yeah. Betty Buzz. Nice. Look at that. Wait a minute. That plane's upside that down or, or is the bottle upside down? I don't know. Just kidding. The plane's oh, upside didn't down. Didn't I get that for you before? I don't think so. You've gotten a couple mm. for me, but not this one. Right. But yeah, um, this is good right. stuff. I've had one of these already. Um, and I'm going to have the second one tonight. Let's see if I can slow down, this. Steve. Let me see if I can get this crack open good on this episode. Let's see. It, it never works. <laughs> oh, that was all right. How was that one? Was that all right? That was horrible. It that was, was horrible. Horrible. Oh, it man. Sounded like, a little better. It sounded like somebody going like, it sounded less than that. Oh, man. The year is 2023. So we are going to feature and talk about our favorite films and albums from 1993 holy moly we gotta right. go way back Aaron. that's right man Going way back for the 30th anniversary 30 year anniversary of that time and i'll tell you what there Let's was a the time lot machine. of good stuff that year you know there i mean was. i knew there was for one because i lived it 
And for two, reviewing it to try to pick something. I'm like, oh, that too. Oh, that one. Oh, man. So this is going to be a, a, a fun little list. But uh, yeah, favorite film and album from 1993. Greg, All right. you're up. But hold on. Can I tell them our fine print, our yeah. stipulation? Go ahead. All right. We we decided right off the bat that we couldn't pick Tombstone because we've talked enough about Tombstone and probably we would have all, that would have been our universal pick. Yeah, would that would have been what I would have picked, honestly. It would have been what I would have picked. <laughs> so we can't pick Maybe Tombstone. Not, yeah, so Tombstone um, is, the, the Tombstone jersey has been re- retired for now. <laughs> for now. Yeah, it's up, it's hanging from the rafters in the <laughs> V3 Podcast Hall of Champions. That's right. <laughs> Tombstone, you know, Tombstone has been retired. My favorite film, not choosing Tombstone, is A Bronx Tale. Yeah, oh, man. You, yeah, you guys remember that. that movie? Yep. Love it. I thought about it that. Has, one. It, it has one of my favorite scenes in it uh, where they lock those bikers in the bar. And he <laughs> yes, said, now use, now use can't leave. Right. Yep. Dynamite. And, like, and, the, and they pan over to the bikers and you can just see the blood draining from their faces. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> I mean, there's so many good things about that movie. You know, you got Robert De Niro, uh, Chaz Palminteri. So I love the biker scene, but it's also got, you know, it's a really good movie about like uh, the racial tension in that neighborhood, like in that neighborhood of, and at that time. And uh, like the use of knights in white satin, that whole scene uh, is, is pretty powerful. And then um, just uh, the dynamic between Robert De Niro and, and Chaz Palminteri, like Robert De Niro is trying to keep his son like, you know, honest and, you know, his, you know, that dynamic where the son sort of like thinks his dad's a punk, you know, compared to this other guy because he's getting money. And yeah. It, it, there's just a lot, there's so much going on and it. It's just so good. It's like one of my favorite sort of underrated, like gangster movies. Yeah. So that's my film pick. My album pick. If we're going back to 1993, Greg, there's only one band that stood on top of that hill that year. I already know it entombed yeah wolverine blues how very could it nice. be anything but that very nice yeah great be. riffs on that record man you know that that album was pretty divisive among <laughs> some of some people because it definitely sort of invented a new genre for them i mean you know left hand path and the clandest clandestine and then wolverine blues was something totally different uh yeah. definitely incorporating like you know rock and roll hardcore you know, there were a whole bunch of stuff coming in there. And then and they, and they sort of invented death and roll. And then a bunch mm-hmm. of bands did that. Like Dismember is probably the most obvious. I feel like they sort of, you know, hopefully I have my metal history right. But I feel like Dismember sort of like copied Entombed on that. But Entombed, you know, the good thing about them is is uh, Nick Anderson just never really cared. You know, he just was going to do exactly what he wanted to do. And, and mm-hmm. that was that. And uh you know they were more they were they were more interesting because of that. So mm-hmm. uh, I'll never forget. <laughs> you guys have heard the Harpo story, but like Colin and uh, Mal and myself and uh, Jeff, we all went to see Entombed at Harpo's on that tour. And uh, I think I actually like dug up the actual date of that. It was uh, April sixteenth, nineteen ninety four. Colin had <laughs> Colin had to pay to get in twice because uh, Mal got kicked out like within <laughs> the first half hour. <laughs> so, uh, so Callum paid twice to see, uh, entombed at Harpo's. There's a lot more to that story, but I won't bore people with it. Entombed Wolverine blues. Hard to top oh, yeah. that year, man. All right. Steve, you, that's you it. go, Steve. All right. <clears throat> I, I have to pick rising sun, which was, uh, directed by Philip Kaufman. And, uh, he actually wrote some of the screenplay as well. And, uh, starring some of the best names in the business, Sean Connery, Wesley Snipes, Harvey Keitel and uh, Carrie Hiro Yukotami uh, Tagawa. Um, everybody knows him from like Mortal Kombat, right? And and a, and a few others, but uh, dynamite film. It's it, it's hard to even put into words exactly what that film is like because it's uh, part action, part like mystery, almost like part film noir too. Um, when I remember I saw it at the theater, I was in. I was in Florida and I had like some extra time to kill. And uh, so I went by myself to the theater and saw it. And I I didn't know anything about what it was about. I just knew, oh, I love Sean Connery. I love Wesley Snipes. 
cool. Then it's playing at a relatively short time from now. Let's go see it. So I came out of there going, what did I just see? It was so awesome. Uh, and don't forget about the amazing score by Toru Takamitsu. I've had this on disc for many, many, many years. All so the way back to then. Yeah, exactly. How I got it not it too though, long. How weird is it that I happen to mention Rising Sun? At the I know you did a few minutes ago. Yeah, totally. I know. That's because that's, we're all orbiting a central yeah. uh, mind, body, and spirit of, of, of such things. This is why we're doing this podcast to begin right. with. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. I need to see it again. I haven't seen it in years and I, I, I love, I liked it a lot too. So I got to. Yeah, man, they really, they really lean on like the, 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 the mystery part, like they're figuring it out and nice. Um, okay. So album from 1993, probably obvious, but I have to pick death individual thought patterns. Um, the previous album human blew my socks off unbelievably awesome and then they kept it right on going with uh individual thought patterns uh still had steve de giorgio on bass uh they switched drummers uh they, they didn't have sean reinhardt anymore they went to gene hoglan who most people who like metal know gene he's played with so many different bands but uh dynamite album and the production was a little bit clearer as well so you could really hear what steve de giorgio was doing um like you had trouble hearing on the original mix of human so it's just dynamite and i was lucky enough to have seen the tour it came through uh to todd's in the, in the detroit area absolutely fantastic loved every minute of it so yeah i listen to that album still to this day it has never left rotation it's one of my favorites and definitely my favorite of that year yeah yeah that's a that's a great one i actually have i made i had two picks like an alternate pick for album because I knew that you were going to pick individual <laughs> thought patterns and I didn't want to have the same thing. So I had that just in case you didn't. And then the one I will go with now. But um, so my favorite movie from that year, I ended up going with Mask of the Phantasm, the uh, Batman animated movie from 1993. Oh, that, that was awesome, too. Yeah. With uh, Kevin Conroy, of course, as Batman. Mark, We Campbell saw that at Joker. the theater. Yeah, we did in the theater and it was directed by Bruce Tim, who, you know, created the animated series. And um, it was, you know, for years, it was my favorite Batman movie all the way until Batman Begins. Um, and, you know, it's it's animated, but uh, it's done with such attention to detail and such great, you know, voice voice cast and everything. Um, it really stands out. I had been waiting to see sort of a version of Batman that I really loved on screen, but live action. And, you know, I hadn't gotten it yet, but with, with, um, Mask of the Phantasm, it was, it was animated, but it was still a great version. Yeah. So Batman Mask of the Phantasm. And then for album, uh, I'll go with Tool Undertow yeah, because, um, I don't know, you know, Tool is lately like their last album, you know, it's pretty kind of tame, you know, but it's, it's still pretty cool. But when they burst onto the scene, undertow was the first thing i heard i was i remember being at camp and steve sent me either a tape or it had to be a tape of undertow which is the same thing you did like probably a year before with helmet uh meantime mm -hmm. um because i you know at camp i wouldn't hear new stuff coming out i wouldn't know anything about what was going on on mtv or or anything um and you're like you sent me a letter back in 93 and you're like hey check this out i think you're gonna love it and so nobody had ever heard anything like tool when they came out and um and they really were one of those bands that changed music like pantera changed metal tool changed music you know rage against the machine and and helmet and um a lot of those bands from the early 90s came and came and changed things and and you know forever whether for better or worse who knows there were lots of bad things that came sort of as a result of tool but also good things so yeah undertow yeah that's my uh, album of 93. i was also lucky enough i went to Lollapalooza, oh out at milan dragway and tool headlined the second stage in that early time when when sober had just hit MTV. It had probably been on MTV only for just a couple weeks or something like that. So probably, you know, 600 people in front of that stage, not a big stage, not that big, huge festival production stage with the overhang and everything like that. 
unbelievably cool to see them that close and that small, I guess, you know, and they played flawlessly. I still remember it to this day. It was, yeah. it was unbelievable. And then I think you told me this, Aaron, that uh, the, the Mask of the Phantasm film, uh, when they animated it, it, it has a certain mojo to the art. They didn't illustrate and color all the art on white paper like you would kind of normally do. They did it on black paper right and then added white wherever it was needed so it just was like more muted and darker by default because there was no white sneaking in anywhere unless they put it there on purpose so it had this the whole other flavor of uh a a visual to it so i I always remember thinking about that going like man that's that's like genius you know (laughs) yeah for sure that's how you make it dark man that's it yeah there you go 1993 man packed full of a lot of good and uh, trend-setting things, for sure. Let us know what your favorite picks from 1993 are, film and album. In this episode of Collecting Cool Stuff, I have one of the coolest things I've ever gotten and will ever have. Beastie Boys, one of my favorite bands in the world. And oh, man. I, had, I got these two from Sabotage, figures. right? You got... What? You got... Bobby the Rookie, you got the Chief here, Mike <laughs> D and, and Ad Rock, but it would be shitty if I only had two, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Right. So I got to thank Greg Maston for a few weeks ago, and after I'd already gotten these and, and had a hard time finding the third one, MCA, Greg Bam. picked it up for me. He happened to send send steve and me some uh pictures of of where he was and he's like check this stuff out and i was like wait did you leave yet can you go back and he got me yeah. this and, yeah it was um, literally already out the front door of target <laughs> yeah, oh, he texted me. i got coaches too so to have the complete set of the bc boy sabotage figures is uh one of the coolest things that can ever yeah happen. man so, that is killer thanks to greg yep Oh man, Greg, you're a great guy, man. You're a great guy. I know. Man. I'm just killing it out there, man. I'm out in those streets. That's finding, right. Streets. Finding drinks, finding toys. Yep. And bringing the heat. Mm-hmm. You should always be checking over your shoulder because I'm right. I'm right there. I'm right behind you. That's right, man. The drink cock. All right, we're gonna bring you something we haven't done in a minute, and we apologize for that. But we're bringing it back this episode. Voyager threes. Tubi picks. Nice. For those who don't know, Tubi is a streaming service, not unlike Netflix, but it's free. He just had to sit through some commercials. Every time I open Tubi up, I am even more impressed by the wonderful collection they have. Yeah. Especially is, in the is. genre of films, man. I mean, they really, in the last two, three years, it's it's really gotten good, man. I mean, it, it's yeah, almost there's a lot it's to there. the level now where Netflix was right before they lost their um stars uh deal if you remember that like netflix had all the cool stuff and then totally went to hell and then they started making their own productions so they took on a whole different angle of course but originally i like netflix for all the collection of old school movies what's you all's tubi picks man give me something good because a couple weeks ago i was i was on a wesley snipes kick speaking of of rising sun it all ties in uh, man (laughs) <laughs> he's the man. He's awesome. He's still awesome. He can still fight and do all the stuff. I watched a couple of Wesley Snipes movies, and the Tubi one I watched was called Gallo Walkers, which is a really cool gothic western. Um, he's he's like, it, and it's it's also supernatural. So he's a guy. I don't who, know of this one. It's really cool. Um, it's like a a cool sort of a cool B movie in a way. I mean, it's not like, I mean, there, it was probably straight to video, you know, it was, I don't think it was ever out in theaters, but he's a guy who went and took revenge because these guys did this, this stuff to his, his woman. And, but every, they were, there was a curse and everybody he killed when he went after these people for revenge, they rose from the grave. So they're all this weird, not zombies, like they can talk and they, they have their memories and stuff, but they came back to life and they're hard to kill. You have to either cut off their head or, you know, zombie, like kill the brain. Yeah. Um, what year is this roughly? 
it was man it was like 2013 maybe okay so Something more like that. even though that's not that long that close to where we are now it's still more recent it wasn't yeah. around like the blade era for example no no it's okay. it's definitely more recent and it's a cool movie it's like uh real fun real gory and um he's awesome in it you know it's a, got a, a cool pretty cool cast like not a lot of people you know but you kind of recognize so that's a cool it's directed by andrew goth he didn't really he hasn't really done much else but uh gallo walkers is a, is a cool movie yeah, that sounds really fun greg what you got on the Tubi docket there has been a movie that i've been waiting to watch and i've been waiting and i've been waiting and it's finally on Tubi, and it's called dog soldiers have you guys oh, seen it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I love it. Yep, I own it on uh, either Blu-ray yeah, or so DVD. Something. I'm late to the party on Dog Soldiers, admittedly, because uh, I was like, man, it's going to be streaming somewhere eventually. But man, that that movie has everything. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so if you've been waiting, like I have, to see Dog Soldiers, it's now on Tubi. And like the point that Steve made about Tubi, like Tubi is great for people who like genre movies like us like yeah. you know like you you said this the movie the movie you picked is like a b movie well there's if you like b movies like we do there are a million of them yeah and dog soldiers is great it's neil marshall who did doomsday and the descent yeah and uh you know he's he's I really think, cool. uh dog he's soldiers like was his first king. major film right uh, yeah, if I'm not first. yeah yeah what a way to start hell yeah <clears throat> and there aren't a lot of really good werewolf movies and that that one's pretty good for sure, man. Yeah, I, I remember seeing that for the first time and just being blown away. Um, because as I mentioned in the previous episode, that was during a time when a lot of, especially horror uh, or anything sci-fi, just super leaning on CGI. But Dog Soldiers is all practical and it just really helps sell it. It's really yeah. intense. So totally recommend that. Good pick, Greg, for sure. Yeah. I watched just last night, as a matter of fact, uh, something super fun i had never even heard of it before um but just like we're talking about you start scrolling down the different genres and subgenres. so i ended up in the giallo uh you know italian type of murder mystery horror euro stuff and uh i do like joe diamato because he did some films that uh that are high on my list like uh Buy omega and uh zombie five uh, the killing birds but this one he did from 1973, I'd never heard of it. It's called Death Smiles on a Murderer. And it's so cool. It was shot really interesting. And it's kind of trippy. You don't really know what's going on. And the main character, Greta, uh, you don't know what's going on with her. And it unravels. Is she alive? Is she not alive? Well, nobody knows yet. You know, it's it's fun. And the music is really cool, uh, too. That's done by uh, Berto P Paisano. And uh, it's really kind of lo-fi in a way. Um, the, the, the first thing I thought about uh, toward the beginning, he keeps doing this one trick with like a, uh, an, ele an electric guitar plugged into like something like a pig nose or something that just has like, you know, not full bodied sounds, very mid uh, focused. And he just kind of keeps hitting the open E string when, uh, when he needs to push an extra point across or to, or to get your attention. And it sounds just like the beginning of Psychic Powerless, Another Man Sack, uh, nice. when the Butthole Surfers do that. It's the same thing. Like it's from the same spirit. N nobody That's copied awesome. each other or anything, but it's just coming from that same kind of mojo. And uh, it made me think of Butthole Surfers, even though it's not supposed to make you think of strange, weird avant garde punk rock. <laughs> right. Because it was from 73. It's a little uh, predating that. But uh, very fun film. If you like already stuff in that ilk, you know, um, sort of a little, little bit mysterious. This one isn't so much murder mystery like a lot of giallos are. It's more just kind of supernatural mixed with gruesome uh, kills and, and death scenes. Um, very cool. So totally recommend it, uh, especially if you like Joe D'Amato's work, like from Buy Omega, like I said. It's along those same lines where you just like, he's trying to gross you out. And it's working, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. kind of thing for sure. Sweet. So uh, awesome. check out Tubi. So I got all the good stuff on there. Yeah. Don't complain about the commercials, man. All right. We have a little bit of Voyager 3 news to get through. Uh, 
talking about New York Ninja on the movie channel Extra, which is in the Showtime bubble. Um, got a couple of uh, running dates for you. We got Thursday, February 23rd at 2.35 a.m. And Tuesday, February 28th at 3.30 in the morning. So uh, brew that coffee, set that DVR, and enjoy New York Ninja in the comfort of your own home. You can even be watching that thing with the foot massager going or something if you if, you know if you if you, if you so choose to. <laughs> yeah, wait <laughs> wait till New York wait till New York Ninja gets on Tubi. Oh, yeah, man, that would be sweet. Then we're really going to be telling you not to sit through those commercials. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Don't and worry we'll about the commercials. It. We'll take right. it personally at that point. Yep. The plutonium right. killer will be back right after these messages. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, funky cold patina in, in regards to our last episode about wrath of Khan, uh, <laughs> pointed out that Ricardo Montalban was in great shape. He was in his sixties when he did uh wrath what? of Khan. That's and, right. Yeah. And here's the thing too. I, I forgot to mention this last time. This is important. It's ever since I was probably a teenager, <laughs> I heard that he wore a, a prosthetic chest like a rubber chest because he didn't have the pecs you know to fill out the costume like uh khan does and so i've always kind of not liked that idea of ricardo montalban who was a proud man mm -hmm. and a strong man a man and of a character uh, a, a man of uh of integrity <laughs> and i didn't imagine him putting on a fucking rubber chest piece i didn't imagine that it didn't make sense to me so when i watched it recently i paid particular attention to, to his him and his, his relationship <laughs> in his chest his relationship between the chest and the neck of course he wears that necklace the whole time right but guess what guess what thank you patina for pointing it out because I watched him, and when he strains, and when he talks, and his neck strains, you can see underneath that uh, that necklace, you can see the same straining and uh -huh. flexing in the chest. So yes, that is his real chest. Whoever told me, probably somebody who was like three years older than me back when I was a teenager, and they, they wanted to get one over on me, or whatever, <laughs> they had heard it. I don't know. Whoever, whoever started that rumor out there, that is Ricardo Montalban's real chest. Let the man show the man some respect. He's been That's dead right. for how long? Uh, I think 2002. I don't 15, know. 15, 20 sure. years. Yeah. Show this man some respect. Stop talking shit about his chest because he obviously <laughs> worked out. He was in his 60s when he did That's that. That's right. That's right. So let's give it up for that. And he was and the, dedicated. Uh, yes. And Patina also pointed out in search of tomorrow this massive, whomping five hour documentary about science fiction movies. Um, I don't know. Did he say where you can watch that? Did, or, he, you know? I don't know. Man, In search of tomorrow, it check it out. Look it up. Give yourself some a, a few days to get through that one. Yeah, but watch it, it in cool. the same way that you watch to get back. You know, pieces, piece yeah. it together. Piece Hit it pause, together. Pause. You know, write down the timestamp. Whatever you got to do. For God's sake, don't try to watch it all at once. No, yeah, not, let, not yeah, unless crazy? not unless you got no responsibilities, and that's okay too. <laughs> yeah, no kids, no pets, no responsibilities, nothing but time. That's then right. maybe maybe it's okay, but otherwise, take it easy. Oh, that's right, take it easy. That's so right. the other one is BL Fisher mentioned a band called Meat Hook Seed, which is a side project that features. Oh yeah, I remember both them. Tardy Brothers. You you've heard of that? Yeah. Um, no, I didn't know about this. I know Don Tardy, the Tardy on brothers. vocals and Don Tardy on drums with like some other people, but it's like a weird like industrial. It was like kind industrial, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember hmm. that stuff. I, have to look I didn't that know up. it was. I don't think I knew it was them though. So is, is, is like Donald it's Tardy? It's really obvious. What's that? Is is Donald Tardy like playing along with loops or something like that? Or what? I don't even know. I don't know because I didn't listen to it yet. All right, I'm gonna have to That's check wrong. that out. I'm, but I'm I curious need to listen to it. Yeah, and um, so check that I'm gonna out. Add it to my library right now. Uh, there you go. See, Greg is know very that. organized. I know. Greg is. I know the. I know the name Meat Hook Seed. I wonder why how that made it past me. Yeah. There you go. That's and what thanks, happens. Thanks, BL. You, thanks, BL. 
because he heard us talking about obituary and he had to get get in educate us man that's right man that's awesome yep, I'm, yep I, I even you guys know the cover too look up the cover it's like a infant and it's got like a plastic bag over its head you've seen this mm-hmm. image i guarantee you can't see that you can't talk about I, that i don't i don't remember well, i mean that's what it looks like <laughs> all right fair enough hey that's man dark. i'm just describing it I already mm-hmm. added to my library there you so, go there you go right, cool done well, deal in tomorrow real time. morning when you're uh, when you're doing your morning's push-ups you can be rocking out to meet yeah, but, seed. yeah don't look at the album cover yeah, right, we don't want to talk about the i album. think it's going to spook you out <laughs> if you dwell on the album cover too much the album's <laughs> called embedded and guess what year it came out 93 1993 <laughs> yeah. oh, oh my no. god yeah, wow 83. see Dude. we're on a roll here man we're on a roll <laughs> on a roll Thanks to BL and Funky Cold Patina. Hey, so I got something for uh, friends doing cool shit. Uh, we have a friend Costa, and he has done a new record. Um, I'm going to butcher the name of the band because uh, I think there's a Dutch way to pronounce it, but you know we're Americans, so we're going to look at it and call it Have Main. But I think it's probably Hal the Man something like that but steve you would know better than me i mean you you mastered it so you you know right. get... yes here's the uh cassette uh i've been saying half main station that's what i've been saying in my head when i have to think about it or, or talk about it all right yeah. costa who, cool, who is man. closer steve or me in pronouncing it correctly that's hit us up in the comments Oh yeah, those are cool, man. Yeah, See, that's to- a cassette, tone deaf Aaron. tapes, man. Tone deaf tapes did it, and then of course that's you know it's on all the, right uh, it's on all the streaming stuff too. If you don't do cassettes, from what I gathered, a lot of layers, man, of uh, guitar stuff. Um, you know those cool pedals that have like the looping stuff and like really big reverbs and stuff like that, kind of creating cool textures and um, and vibes, and then you keep stacking it. It's just fun, man. Like every track that came on after the other, I was like, oh, wow. You know, just different approaches. Sometimes it started low and rumbly. Sometimes it, you know, strumming up by the, by the, uh, the bridge. So it's all like twangy, you know, fun, fun stuff like that. So, uh, awesome. good job, Costa. Nice. Yeah. And that's on Bandcamp. Hell, hell the man station. Yeah, look it up on Bandcamp. I, I, I think uh, I think the money goes to a good cause too. So um, that's cool as well. All right, we're gonna close out this V three cast because I want to know what's your spring and summer concerts that you're looking forward to. One, two, three of them, big ones, small ones. Maybe you already got tickets. Maybe you got the on sale date and that password waiting. You know how that works nowadays. Let us know, Aaron, what you got. Because I think you look like you have the m- the most tickets out of all of us. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I've been indulging and in, in, in not missing concerts as much as possible. So in April at St. Andrew's Hall is Enslaved. And I love Enslaved. And actually, thanks to Greg for playing Enslaved for me for the first time probably 20 years ago. 20, 20 years ago, yeah. And, and I um, gave you the hoodie. Yeah, and you gave me the hoodie. Nice. Greg is a, he, you know, he's a fucking super guy, man. I know, man. I'm t- I'm and saying. I got you the Beastie yeah. Boys figure. I mean, I'm yeah. really coming through. That's Did right. Did we ever really take a minute to understand and recognize how good a dude Greg is? <laughs> Greg's a solid man. <laughs> solid. So because when you, you played he played ob- he played enslaved for me like on a whim. We were got we were going to I think we were going to Ingve Momstein. <laughs> Where oh, we? yeah. I, no, yeah, it was docking. Yeah, it was both of them. It was both of them. Yeah. At yeah. Uh, Royal Oak Music Theater. And like everybody was there. Colin was working that night, I think. Or maybe he was just there. Well, he came to the show on his bathroom break. It's cool. Yeah, he went on a bathroom <laughs> break. Remember? That's what he did. That's right. And, uh, and you were like, hey, you might like this. And you played beneath the lights and uh, below the lights. And yeah. I was like, oh my God, I've never heard anything like this. I love Enslaved. The great thing about this show, because I've seen them twice now, but like their songs tend to be pretty long. And when I've seen them, they've played like four songs, maybe five songs. Yeah, yeah. they definitely have like Opeth, uh, 
You know, yeah. like if, when you go see Opeth open for somebody, you know, you get like two songs. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So I've never seen them headline until this one. This is going to be their headlining show. So I hope they play for three hours and I'll be happy. Um, that's going to be I great. And to, it's a, I might have to get tickets to that. Yeah. And St. Andrews, I man. So I know, the best venue, it. man. Um, that's in April. In May, uh, I have Clutch uh, in Grand Rapids because they're not coming to Detroit. But they come to Detroit a lot, so sometimes they'll change it up and go to Flint or they'll go to Grand Rapids. So I'm going to travel for that one. And then in August is Ghost and Amon Marth. So how could I pass that up? You know, right. two great bands playing together. Um, that'll be great. That'll be at Pine Knob. So that'll be there really, really cool. Um, That's the best the new, venue. I know, yeah, man. Super fun. Uh, the new Ghost album is great. Like, they had a dip with their prequel a few years ago uh it was a little too poppy for my taste but the newest one is great it's back to form and and uh it's it's uh more it's higher energy that's for sure what was that? so i'm what looking for the name of that what's the name of that impera impera oh impera no, the, the, what the about you guys know. the people want to know what concerts are you going to i put a, a wish list together i kind of i know i made this topic up but <laughs> i put together a list of who I wish would come here, but there's a caveat. I'm not just wishing out of thin air. They're on tour. Okay. So I kept looking for Detroit dates, nothing. So I'm hoping that as the, the, the weeks and months push on, they'll add Detroit maybe. But uh, so I'll start with that. Then I'll tell you the one that I do want to go to. Um, but okay. So obituary, the new album's out and they're on tour, both, in Europe and in the States, just no Detroit date, uh, rival schools, believe it or not, rival schools reformed with all the original members Jeez. because it's the 30th nice. or 25th anniversary of United by fate. So yeah. they're playing a sprinkling of shows both in Europe and in the States, no Detroit Sweet. date. Uh, and then Godflesh is on tour and I've seen them back in the day, like on the pure tour and one other one, I think, I think I've seen them twice. Um, I would love to see them again. No Detroit date. That so sucks. I'm hoping any one of those or all three will eventually get to this area. Now, the one I'm going to go to, speaking of Pine Knob, how can you not go to Foreigner and Loverboy on August 30th? Jesus. Nice. That's perfect. When, when when they play, every single song will be a hit. Every single yeah. one. There's no bathroom breaks when Foreigner right. plays. You'll miss something no. great. <laughs> you'll walk out of there and immediately start listening to their greatest hits. Yep. Yes, indeed. I just listened to Foreigner 4 the other day. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. record, for sure. So, yeah, yeah I, that one I want to go to. I, I do love a great Pine Knob show. Usually Lawn, because the Pavilion... Yeah, that, that's another thing I'll mention real quick. I don't want to turn this into something else, but I am also uh, jaded, disheveled, and disappointed in concert prices right now. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like, yes, COVID hit and people have to make up some revenue and things are more expensive for bands like via the production, the bus rental and backline stuff and and uh, crew. I get all that, but I feel like somewhere in there too, somebody somewhere is pushing that a little too hard. And I'm not probably least of which are the bands. Um some of these prices are just absolutely ridiculous. Like, uh, I think I looked at, at the foreigner lover boy show, even not even a great spot on, in, in the pavilion is like, uh, $125 for one ticket, you know, and lawn didn't lawn always used to be 20 bucks. Now I'm not trying yeah, to say like that you yeah. should be frozen in time back from 1996. I know that, that, that does not, that's not how it works, but I think lawn is like 75 now. No, it's way. like, Come on, man. For Foreigner? Uh, I have to recheck who I checked for that, but I'm pretty sure I saw Lawn 75. I've never then, seen Lawn Steve, over 40, no matter Steve, what. Steve, you might want to go into one of those gas stations over there by Pine Knob that has like just a stack of those tickets sitting on the counter. Yeah, I know. Remember Isn't that? It? That used to be so cool, man. There used to be tons of Lawn tickets for free all yeah. the time for those shows. Just I don't think they do up. that at all anymore. I don't believe they do. But yeah, hmm. anyway... Prices are a little bit crazy right now. Yeah, they're ridiculous. Um, so I'm not going concert crazy, um, but I'm, I'm going to see some shows. And I'm, I'm also looking forward to the sprinkling of our local 
Detroit bands that play, um, that's always fun too. And that can be more spontaneous because you just go out to that club that night. So that's going to be yeah. cool too. All right. So I'm going to call mine the Greg summer of disappointment. Uh Oh, <laughs> <laughs> there are two incredible bands that I, um, I would love to see this summer and much like Steve, I'm, I'm slowly starting to realize that they're, they are probably skipping Detroit. Um, one of them, I actually, uh, talked to a few people and convinced them to drive to Cleveland if we could get tickets and turns out we couldn't. And, uh, because everybody from Detroit had the same plan apparently. Right. Uh, but it sold out like immediately on the Ticketmaster site, you know, that thing where it goes on sale at 10 and you can't even get a ticket. Like it's right, completely yeah. sold out within 30 seconds for sure. Right. So, uh, skinny puppy is doing their final tour and it's their 40th anniversary. So they're wrapping wow. like the whole thing up. And, uh, we were feverishly trying to get tickets and yeah. I don't, I don't think it's going to happen unless they add now what I've heard is they're upgrading a lot of their venues. So I think the demand is exceeding what they expected. So it's possible that because of that, maybe they'll add some additional, uh, cities, you know, right. and, and, or they and might venues. play two nights or they might move it to a larger venue. All those types of tricks could come. Yeah. Into play. So, so that's the first one that I'm not going to first, part of Greg's summer of disappointment. No, I, I, I'm putting a mojo out there, Greg. You will see that tour one way or the other. So I'm putting yeah, it I'm out there see in the universe. A, I'm going to see it on YouTube <laughs> what I'm gonna, where I'm going to see it. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that, that's that's stone cold when, when, when you realize, yeah, I'm going to be seeing this from someone's cell phone. Yeah, so that's the first part of Greg's summer of disappointment. Second part, this was just announced last week too. Emperor is reforming well, I, I guess they sort of have been reformed, but they are coming to the U.S. They already have their visas secured. They put that like right in the press announcement because that happens all the time. You know uh, how it is with the European bands. Like yeah. they're like, yeah, we're going on tour, and then like the one guy couldn't get a visa. And they're oh, like, well, yeah. I guess we're not. I guess we're not going. So, anyways, mm -hmm. this is the anthems to Welcome at Dusk tour, and it's going to sh it's going to, sh to Chicago, New York, Texas, and then two dates in California, and that's it. Damn, I'm like, that's you really gotta be thin. kidding. First of all, that's my favorite black metal band. Second of all, that's their best record. Just like the Beatles have two best records. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Emperor well, what about also, this Chicago date, Greg? When is that? It's June 23rd at the Aragon Ballroom. It's not impossible. Yeah, you could you could finagle not, that. But again, you know, I'm so... I'm kind of like you right now. I'm kind of pissed off about the skinny puppy thing. Like we couldn't even like get a tick, like a single ticket. Right. It, it right. seems like the system is rigged Two giant shows that I would gladly go to if they were coming to Detroit, I would, I would love to go. But, um, again, it's the summer of disappointment so far. Keep your eyes maybe I'll go to, Keep maybe I'll go to enslaved with Aaron and that'll make up for part of it. There you there go, you man. Go. Yeah, singing at the best venue in the country definitely helps. All right, we we want to say thank you to everybody who's been listening to V3Cast and sharing and commenting and liking. We really appreciate it. So if, if you like um, a synth-based rock band that does a podcast as well, give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, this has been V3Cast, the official Voyager 3 podcast.